So the bottom shelf and the drawer supports and the carpet are in. Now I want to make the upper shelves and install those. So these are going to be a little narrower. I think they're about 10 inches wide out of the same glue lamb material. When we were first thinking about this project, this wall was just going to be shelves, but we ended up deciding to put the TV on this wall as well. And as we've gone around with different design ideas, it's become more and more about the TV and less and less about the shelves. So at this point, I have the shelves running the full length of the wall, but they will get narrower behind the TV. And there'll be sort of a, a curvy transition between where the shelf is wide and then where it's narrow. So I think it goes from about 10 inches wide down to three inches wide, I think. I had to glue up some scraps to get the amount of material I was gonna need, but it's a glued up beam, so that's not hard to do. And there were a couple of spots where there were cracks in the wood, so I glued those back together again. I just opened the crack up with a screwdriver and got some glue in there then clamp the crack back together. I sanded off the varnish from the beam a little bit. This will get the varnish off and clean up whatever dirt might still be on the outside of the beam. Then I can joint that face and plane the other face and get all of the pieces the same thickness. I was shooting for an inch and a half. I ended up pretty close to that. I think it's just a hair under an inch and a half in thickness. Because I'm going to have a, a narrow part and a wide part of the shelf with a transition, I could make up my blanks so that I'd have a narrow section and a wide section, and I could then cut the curve into that piece that I glued together. So I sort of made a bunch of panhandles, if you can think of it that way. <laughs> With sort of a, a fat part and a thin part. There'll be four shelves and I'm doing each side. So I need eight of these parts made. And once I've done glued together, I cut one side to the final surface, I guess. <laughs> and I could put that on the CNC machine. I thought about several different ways to cut this curve into the shelf. One way would be to just throw all of these eight down on the CNC machine one at a time and just cut the curve, which is what I'm doing on this first one. And that would totally work. But what I ended up doing was cutting the first one and using that as a pattern and I could draw a pencil line on the other blanks with the pattern, then cut out the shape on the bandsaw quickly and roughly, then put the cutout pieces back on the CNC machine and just clean up that edge instead of actually making a full cut. So in doing it this way, I used the bandsaw blade a little bit more and I saved the router bits a little bit more. I think I was thinking a little bit along the lines that you make a pattern and then clean it up on a shaper. That's kind of the idea I was going for. But I used the CNC instead of the shaper. So this went fairly fast, cutting these out. I had some stops set up on the CNC table that I could line each piece up to so it would be in the same place then I could just have the machine run that shape and clean up that cut. Once I had the shelves cut, I still had all the little knots and defects that I had had on the big shelf in the last video. And instead of cutting out plugs for those, I thought maybe I'd try filling those with resin. I found some tape to kind of plug up the ones that were on the edge. I kind of just plowed into this without a whole lot of preparation. And it didn't really come out as good as I'd hoped. <laughs> I got a lot of bubbles. I really should have some newer resin. That would help. 
And I should have been out in the shop ready with the heat gun to pop bubbles as they formed. And I should have coated the wood before I put the resin in to protect it from the water in the wood. So I ended up with kind of a bubbly foam. And most of them didn't really work that well. So I ended up going back and putting plugs in a lot of the knot holes in the shelf. And if you want to see more of that, the previous video with the big shelf, I go into this a lot more. So I will show this really quickly, but it's basically exactly the same thing I did. It does make these shelves match the shelf at the bottom. So maybe doing it this way really was the best way to do it. <laughs> Some of them stuck out on the flat side of the shelf, so I sanded those down on the disc sander. I could sand them down just a little bit with the belt sander, then joint that surface and get a nice, clean finish. Then I did a final sanding with the orbital sander. And I did the edges at this point too. I got a comment on an earlier video, I think when I was doing the wall, talking about the vents that go between the two rooms that I had put in on the bottom. And it was mentioned that it would be a good idea to have vents behind the TV as that's where the heat is made. And that seemed like a really good idea. I thought I would take that panel down and cut holes in that wall, one to allow the heat to move from behind the TV but also to let us run wires between the two rooms. As the TV is gonna be on one side and we'll have a media computer and all of the cabling coming in from the storage room. So having a bunch of holes right behind the TV would be perfect. And I put a few more screws in the plywood to hold it onto the wall. Then I put finish on the shelves. I did this mostly now because putting finish on the underside of a shelf is a pain. <laughs> so if I could do them first while they're in the shop, it would be a lot easier to put the finish on. As I can just pour it onto the surface and spread it around. I'm using wipe-on polyurethane. With the shelves, I'm going to bolt them to the wall. So I need to drill holes through the wall on the family room side, then clamp the shelf to the wall as best I can, then drill from the back side into the shelf. Because I have two widths of shelf, I have two lengths of bolts. So I have six inch bolts and four inch bolts. So I have, I have a piece of tape on here for, for the depth for a six inch bolt, but I can't really put a second piece for the, my four inch bolts that I need. So I made a two inch square block of wood. So when I get this in to where the, the tape meets the block of wood, I know I'm in four inches. So it'll, it'll work for the four inch bolt. I, I really don't want to go all the way through the front of the shelf. <laughs> The square was also helpful in checking to make sure that the drill was square to the wall, at least enough so it goes into the shelf. <laughs> I figured out after a shelf or two that I could also use the little square as a height gauge off of my shelf spacer to figure out where to drill the holes for the next shelf. That made this process go really quickly. And I would do a bolt at each end of the shelf first. That would help hold the shelf to the wall better than my clamping method was. Then I could do all the bolts in the middle of the shelf. And the shelves are really sturdy. I was afraid as they're, they're sort of floating and they don't have support under them that they, they wouldn't be that strong. But I think you could probably climb on these and they would be fine. <laughs> Then I put finish on everything, and that's how it is with the shelves, and it looks really good. So now it's time to mount the TV and build the computer, 
and work on the secret door that I haven't talked about much. I'm hoping that will be a whole video in itself. Thanks for watching.